Did you punch a motherfucker's face and he just head exploded at you? I'm pretty sure if you get that much blood on you, somebody lost the match at that point. Holy shit. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here. I'm the creator of the RP Hypertrophy app and I'm a professor of exercise and sports science at Lehman College in the Bronx in New York City. I'll bear the rest of where I'm from. Jake Paul is a person on the internet that I know almost nothing about. And uh, Scott, the video guy was like, hey, do you want to review his training? And I said, yes. So let's find out where that goes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fight Night Circuit. I heard he was very good at fighting. This is curious. I do have uh, a bit of an expertise in combat sport. I'm a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've competed a bunch. I've been paid to fight at least once. So technically that makes me pro, but only technically. I'm not that good at Jiu Jitsu, but I've been beat up a lot. And I've studied quite a bit about how to organize combat sport training, uh, specifically weight training for sport periodization to be the best combat sport athlete possible. Uh, let's see what I, I, first of all, I love his gloves. I can't even see his hands because they're so camouflaged. Go. The goal of today's workout is to simulate the fight. We're gonna have crowd noises playing. The air horns will be blasting. It is going to be loud as shit in here. And we have the craziest circuit. I can't tell if this is just for clicks or if they really think this is effective. I don't really have a problem with simulating the environment. I think the best time to simulate that would be when you're actually in the ring sparring because that's the maximum sport specificity. You're in the ring, you're sparring, in training. And if you have crowd noises and air horns, like that's actually kind of smart to do. So I like that. If they're gonna be doing some kind of like weight training or plyo circuit, the specificity is already so off that incrementally increasing specificity by a small margin by doing crowd noises and air horns, it doesn't seem to fit all that well, but his coach looks like he knows things, so let's find out what he has to say. We're gonna be tapping into the full body. I'm saying I've tapped a, a few full bodies before. Throw them bows, you know what I'm saying? Just kidding, I've seen it on the television. And I was like, gee whiz, people look like they're having a lot of fun with each other. I hope they're both wearing condoms. Isn't that how it works? We're gonna be hitting upper body, lower body, speed and agility. I like how he gave us a list of what is included in whole body. He's like, for those idiots, if you don't know what that means, there's an upper body and a lower body, at least, I think. There may be more parts of the body that I'm missing. Even some punches gonna be in some there. Some punches. I love that they're just getting in there like rappers in front of a camera style, like cutting each other off. Like, no, no, what my man is trying to say here is that we're getting agility. He's like, yes, and punches, yes. And what else? We got it all, baby. It's basically 30 minutes of hell to simulate what the fight is gonna be like. August 6th coming up. As you guys know, I'm taking a Haseem Rahman Jr. Haseem Rahman Jr. I don't know anything about boxing. I mean, literally almost nothing, especially from a fan perspective of who's good. But if your name sounds like you're a black Muslim, you're gonna be beating my ass. That's the way I think about that shit. You don't ever beat a black Muslim in a fight. That's nonsense. Uh, Scott the Video Guy, can we look up if Jake Paul in indeed won that fight or lost it? Canceled due to weight discrepancies. Fight never happened. <laughs> Rematch or no? <laughs> Somebody didn't make weight. That sucks, you trained for that long and then. This is the fight night circuit. Let's it's gonna get be crazy, it. let's go. <laughs> If he was my coach, he'd be like, hey, like, I, I like the air horn, but I don't like the air horn. Stop fucking blowing it in my face. So we're going to start off technical with some boxing, throwing out some jabs. We're coming right here. Battle ropes, 30 seconds. Next station, burst of climb with 30 seconds. We're just tapping the whole body. Come right here. 10 hand cleans. By the time that you get through three high cardio demand exercises, the hand cleans are going to be so not technical and so not conducive to training repeat power output that is curious to put them there. It's something that can work, but is unlikely to work if the person maintains excellent technique and continues to provide a lot of hip drive through that movement. It can work. We'll see if it does in a second. 10 pull-ups, fast and strong, grabbing the hammer, tire flip all the way down. Tire flips. We're down there, coming back. The whole time they're gonna be throwing water in my uh, face. You never know what's gonna be coming at you in the fight. You never know what's gonna be coming at you in a fight. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think the fight promoter is allowed to have a super soaker that he shoots at people. You can be pretty sure in a fight that you don't get water in your face. Now, the guy could sweat in your face. He could sweat in your own face. It's interesting. I would say this is like flashy bullshit for the sake of flashy bullshit. You can get your eye poked. You can get blood in your eye. Like my last fight. Eye poke blood in your eye. Maybe you just go for full specificity and have that. I'm kidding. So the whole time they're going to be throwing water in my face. So after the tire flip, you're coming right in here. You got some nice, good squats. Squats after tire flips. I'd like to see that. Jesus. As soon as he finishes up with that, Coach BJ is going to bring him right here. Yeah, Coach BJ. Uh, no offense. All of you guys can beat my ass. BJ is a funny name. Do you guys know why? I don't know. Just feels nice to say. BJ. I've heard people have BJs. I don't know what that means, but I heard they're fun. Somebody loving you down there. I'll cut myself off.
We're gonna do some hard shots to the body, tap the body. Okay, all right, I like it, a little body work. One minute body punching. Hasim, I'm coming for your body fight night. Hasim, you little bitch, you better make weight. Ha <laughs> ha, JK, one of us didn't. Scott, do we know who didn't make weight? Yo, Hasim legit saw this video and he was like, man, fuck that. This guy's gonna f me up the way he's getting through this f***ing obstacle course. I ain't about that life. Mike may agree to fight at 200 and he was 215 when he agreed and he was like 215, 48, 214, 48 hours out. Like he didn't even try. My man, f making weight. <laughs> Dude, I'm not, I love the Hasim approach, man. That's that real life. You talk that shit, you sign a f***ing contract and you just don't f***ing do dick. I love it. That's real shit talking. I made you prep for a fight, pussy, and I didn't even show up ready for the shit. How's that for fucking mic drop? Come off the body punches right here to some reverse incline push-ups. It's nice. These are all by themselves quite good movements. The arrangement of so many of them in a row dilutes the purpose of the training into a question mark. Knock those out, hop on the ladder, real speed, coming down, down and back a couple times. Man, they got it all. They were like, all right, every single exercise in the gym, you're gonna do that shit. He's like, are you serious? Yep, every single one, line them up. This is real, real, real shit. Leg push and pull all the way down, all the way back. As soon as we come back off those sled pulls, hopping right here on the Versa Climber. Yo, hold up, Versa Climber again? The assault bike, God damn it. Oh, he got it wrong, it's the assault bike. Well, technically speaking, a very similar move. <laughs> we didn't name everything in the damn gym today because that's how crazy you're going. He literally said what I just made a joke about. <laughs> yeah, folks, proper training doesn't mean doing everything. Proper training means figure out what you have to do, what your highest return on investment things are, and then organize them in a way like building blocks so that they make the most sense to do. Like if you're taking a girl out to a restaurant to eat, which I don't know anything about because I've never been out with a girl or to a restaurant or in public. But in any case, you know, you don't have to take the bitch to Italian, Chinese, you feel me, American, Japanese food, and then back to French cuisine. You gotta take her to a one nice place and that usually seals the deal. Get that bitch a f a bucket of chicken from KFC. That's it. You're in. And you take her home. You'd be like, what do you think about that bucket of chicken? And she's like, I love you. And you're like, I know. Let me call my friend BJ. He's not picking up. I'm trying to fit. I'm trying to fit it. So I imagine these things go. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong about how dates work. If you guys like that, we have more of the extended cut in our member section. So give that a sign up and maybe you'll like things that happen there. Finishing up with some abs, some reaction, and some arm fighting. So yeah, there you That's go. That's one round. We got three rounds. Very curious. That's a lot of stuff. Oh my god, dude. Yo, his training partners may like, dude, this sucks. Everyone's yelling. The rumble sound, the air horn. Is this a Jamaican dance hall? Are we in a boxing gym? What the hell is going on here? He can punch. He would f my ass up. I better, better shut the f up talking all the shit. He was going to catch me outside and be like, yeah, I heard you were a big funny man on YouTube making fun of my shit. I'd be like, Mr. Mr. Jake Paul, if there is a chance for me not getting beat up by you, I'll do anything it takes. I heard you had a friend named BJ. I'm that friend now. Let me see it. I'm thorough and well-studied and eager and technical. And I do it with love and a real interest in the fact that you have a good time. But you know what, secretly, I'm having a good time too. Hit me up, we don't even have to beef. Battle ropes, battle ropes is very good conditioning for boxing and is a good movement by itself for this purpose. But in the context of everything else, it kind of loses some of its value. His training partner's really looking at that cell phone timer like, I, I know how numbers work, but I just don't want the shit to sneak up on me. I better say right away when it's time to switch. Dedication. First a climber. Okay, honestly, bro, like, I don't mean to talk that shit, but it's my job. So all fun and jokes, folks, all fun and jokes. He's not really cranking on that thing. Like you don't do a circuit like this to survive the shit. You do it to excel at it. You gotta push yourself. And I'm not saying he's not pushing himself, but I'm saying he might not be pushing himself. Look at that arm speed. He's kind of coasting along, like uh, he could go faster. But maybe I just don't know and that's on purpose. The way I see this as a sports scientist is all this stuff is time not spent actually training boxing technique, boxing conditioning, boxing tactics, boxing strategy. You could do all the shit in the ring and if you really want an extra crazy conditioning hit, just put on a fucking weight vest and then go in the fucking ring. Now you're slow and heavy and you gas faster and you still gotta throw those hands and keep that defense up, move around, position yourself against uh, a rotation of fresh guys. You just can't really beat training like that. 
hand clean time. Now, folks, the hand clean is an exercise that is uh, supposed to develop your ability to triple extend, extending at your ankle, your knee, and your hip. It's the jumping motion with weight in your hands. And the proper way to do it is to hinge and do a double knee bend. So you dip your hips once the bar clears the knees under the bar and f it into the air, literally poof, you pop your hips up into the bar. That's the purpose of the hand clean. Doing the hand clean for multiple reps when you're already tired, if you can do that technique, works on maximizing your endurance ability to do what's called repeat power, high power output, one, two, three, four, five, six, et cetera, a number of times. It's a great exercise and it's a totally great way to use it. But if you do not triple extend with it, it becomes kind of like a weird back and shoulder exercise that does just not a whole lot more than tire you out. So let's find out how we're doing it. C plus pull ups, okay. partial pull ups. Yeah, most of the benefits of pull ups is in that bottom half, bottom third, big lat stretch. He's not doing that because he can't do as many pull ups as he'd have to in order to be able to do that. I understand. So the technique here is not great. Zero, zero, zero. Not terrible, but not great. All right, hammer or tire. Yeah, okay, so I'll just cut to the chase. This is a great exercise to develop power in your anterior chain, which includes your hip flexors, your abdominals, and it basically allows you to curl your body powerfully. And it's a great exercise kind of if and only if you do it with force. Intent to move has to be high. So you're gonna try to slam that hammer through that tire. He's just kind of surviving. Is this the best alternate use of his time? It preparing for a boxing match. Is there anything you could be doing with this 30 minutes? And with the amount of fatigue that he has allotted to this, which is a lot, is there a better way to train for fighting? And the answer is, it's either high power, high force lifting, a bit of basic conditioning work, and almost the rest of it needs to come from a variety of boxing, drilling, and sparring. Athletes train in ways very similar to how they play their sport. The physical body is cool to have in great shape, but you gotta remember that you're not there. The event isn't fucking hitting the shit with a hammer and it's, there's no versa climbers in the ring. There's just one dude in the face you don't like. And you gotta train much of your training as much as possible, hitting people in the face or replicas of people, pads, uh, shadow boxing, uh, heavy bag, so on and so forth. Tire flips, again, another, oh, that's a lot of water. Did it, did you punch a motherfucker's face and he just head exploded at you? I'm pretty sure if you get that much blood on you, somebody lost the match at that point. Holy shit. I mean, somebody at this point should shock him in the testicles. That's unexpected and it'll upset you. Yo, I love the spirit of the thing, but there must be better ways to train for the sport of boxing. They don't get as many YouTube clicks. They sure win more fights. We are I love the like low key hip hop in the background. I'm like, hey man, I'm just driving around in my Impala, getting water sprayed in my face. <laughs> Time to do squats, I guess, if I remember correctly. Yep, 135 in the squat. The music's still playing. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, some half squat. Training at this point, mostly the glutes and lower back. It's just, this is just hard stuff. Things to make it hard. Now it'd be a lot harder if he dunked it and actually went full range of motion. For a boxer, that's not very important to do, but if you want bigger, stronger, more powerful legs, doing some full range of motion squatting is probably uh, ideal. It also burns legs out more, challenging him in the circuit more, but I don't want to get too critical on technique because we're kind of sort of beyond that. I think. When the grand scheme is such a random disaster, the specifics are, almost don't matter. What I'm trying to say is, there are intelligent contexts in which partial range of motion lifting is excellent for boxing. This is not one of them. There is no avoiding hard training if you wanna grow. But if you wanna grow the most, your training needs to be hard and smart. RP Hypertrophy app will make sure you're progressing on track, monitoring and adjusting your workout at all times. So for all that work you're doing, you can be sure you're getting the best results. All right, work in the body. Now like, he's punching not so hard. This looks a lot like what my wife and I do every Saturday morning, but uh, it's much more psychological for us. 
All right. Decline push-ups. Okay, so like, I don't know what to say about this. Halfway down, zero, zero, zero. He could easily look forward and then touch his chest to the ground. It's just kind of bouncing around. These are terrible push-ups. Limited application to boxing. If you wanted a better transfer of training, you would have a closer grip and keep your elbows in a little bit because that's how you throw punches. You typically don't punch from out here. So unless you're trying to hypertrophy the chest on purpose, which I don't think any of this is really on purpose at this point. <sighs> a little ladder drill. Yeah. Yeah, we've done some in in looking into the ladder and it turns out that like, if you do the ladder drill often, you're testing who's already the most athletic and has the best footwork. And then you're letting those people just become better at the ladder as a skill in and of itself. It's not a terrible training modality. It's good for basic development, like when you're training children to move athletically. Um, but the best way to do footwork in boxing is to do boxing specific footwork, which this is not. Oh, that's right, sled pushes. Yep. I don't really know how sled pushing transfers a ton to boxing. It's probably okay for repeat power development, but you gotta move a little faster than that to get that effect. It's just kind of ways of making someone work more. Might as well get a job at Walmart stacking boxes at this point. Just stack these boxes really fast. Great, I'm in boxing shape. All right, we're on the bike. He's either insanely exhausted or he's not trying so hard. Maybe he's working on pacing himself, but again, pacing is such a thing it's the thing you want to do in the boxing training specifically. That's where pacing helps you the most. In physical training like this, generally you don't want pacing. You want to go more or less all out so you can push your systems further. All right, working on some ducking. That's cool. Again, a fine movement by itself. That's cool. I love the tennis ball stuff. So some hand reaction stuff. Again, this is a thing you would benefit from doing fresh and as a warm up for um, a technical boxing session. Now when you're doing it tired, I'm not so sure it makes you better at it. You just kind of suck at it because you're tired. Again, this is also a, allowing him to recover substantially. So it's um, not improving the quality of the conditioning work. Oh, we got some grappling work here. Looking for the underhook. That's cool. Dope. Yeah, again, the, these folks know how to train hard. The direction of the training should be at least a little bit more specific. Yeah, one at a time. This is a giant waste of time. I have no idea what that exercise is training. I've never seen anyone do a face pull to the top of their head. What the f is that? <sighs> Folks, when you're training for sport, get you a sport scientist and a sport coach to help organize your training in such a way that makes the most possible sense. So that when you're training for boxing, you do as much boxing as possible to get you the most technique, the most tactics, and you minimize the amount of training you do for basic cardio work, and you minimize the amount of training you do for strength and power work down to the very core essentials that pay the biggest dividends. So you can get better baseline of endurance with a little bit of running, you get a much better baseline of strength and power with a little bit of lifting weights in the gym, very simple movements, and you spend the vast majority of your time in the ring or working with pads or working with bags or working with a coach to do some shadow boxing. And that's where you can derive both your technical and tactical abilities and a whole shitload of your endurance exactly specific to the sport of boxing or whatever sport it is you're doing. Athletes should train mostly the sport that they're playing in very similar ways to how they play it derivatives and combination drills and tactical drills and actual sparring. And on top of that, they can do a little bit of strength power training and a little bit of baseline endurance training. I wouldn't like mixing all those together, spending too much time, ironically, coming from me, a meathead, a bodybuilder, too much time in the gym, not enough time in the boxing ring. And uh, if you want to become better at boxing, getting in that ring as much as possible to the extent your body can allow it is a really, really good idea. So I don't know. Seven out of 10. Do we still rate these things? F if I know. I've been Dr. Mike. See you next time. All right, folks, if you enjoyed that video, YouTube thinks that you'll like this video right over here. And if you click on it, then I become incrementally more wealthy and I buy more Lamborghinis. And, and my butlers, the, the 78 butlers that I have now, they're happier too. Isn't that nice?